Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming. So uh, this is going to be a rather non-technical talk. Uh, I want to talk about uh, what we broke last year in KDPIM <laughs> and what we are going to break next year. Uh, so I just want to basically go through things that we did uh, uh, in the past year with other developers and uh, so tell you what you can what, what you you can expect from us in the next basically four releases. So the biggest thing in the past year for us was switch to KD Frameworks five and Qt five. Uh, the KD applications fifteen oh eight uh, a year ago was our first release with Qt five. Uh, it already included a bunch of uh, performance improvements, and we worked on the user experience as well. And overall, uh, users uh, accepted the new version quite well. Uh, we were surprised that we didn't run into many many porting issues or bugs in general. Uh, there were some minor glitches, but I think we polished most of this uh, by now, and it works quite well. The other bit, big, th big thing that happened uh, in the past year, uh, it's, actually going, it's actually in the, the last 1608 release, was switched to Qt Web Engine. So the way we render emails and, and, and show contacts and event previews is that we just create an HTML and we show it in a, in a web viewer. Uh, with the latest version of Qt, WebKit was deprecated. And since email is one of the possible uh, vectors of attack for attackers, we try to get into your computers and everything. Uh, it's it's better to have a, a, a rendering engine which is uh, updated and secure. So we decided to switch to Qt Web Engine. Uh, I know distributions hate us for it, hate us for it now, but I think in the long term it will be it will turn out to be a good decision. Um, as I mentioned before, we we use HTML a lot to to show stuff because it's the easiest thing to uh, how to present this kind of information, like you know, the event descriptions and, and details about your contacts. So in the previous versions, we, we used to have, uh, we used to just have a C++ code that would randomly assemble the HTML from strings and put the proper values in the middle. Uh, this was almost impossible to maintain, so we slowly migrated to Grantly. Uh, Grantly, if you don't know it, is a cute library for uh, HTML templates. So you basically create an HTML file where instead where the actual values should be, you just put some placeholders and then you ask Grantly to load the template and you give it a map uh, basically of the, key, uh, the, the placeholders and what actual values it should replace it with. <coughs> Sorry. So this allows us not to only have natural HTML files, which are very easy to maintain for us, it also means that in the future we can introduce uh, something like custom uh, templates for provided by users. So if you don't like how your emails look right now, you could easily write your own uh, template and use it and possibly even share it with others through, uh, through the KDE store. <clears throat> the, <laughs> the biggest thing that we've been doing in the past year and uh, another reason why packages hate us was that we've been reorganizing the Git repositories a lot. Uh, if you remember the KD four times, uh, we used to have basically four core repositories. That was Akonadi, KD Pimlips, KD Pim, and KD Pim Runtime. Um, we decided that's not enough, so we now have this. Uh, just uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this is uh, around 60 repositories of KD Pim code. The entire KDE frameworks are around 70 repositories. So you get the idea how big project it actually is. Uh, the reason why we decided to split it like this uh, is that it basically the reason is similar like it was with KDE, KDE Lips and why it was split into frameworks. We had lots of fancy things in there, but nobody could really use it. Right? If you wanted to use our uh, parser for contacts, you would depend on KD, KD Pimlips, so you would, your application would also depend on the entire Akonadi thing, and, and you would get also calendar parser and all the other stuff you didn't need. So we worked on splitting these things. Uh, right now we have, so we, now we have lots of repositories. Uh, um, the Akonadi thing, which was basically split into the Akonadi repository and KD Pimlips repository is now merged. Everything Akonadi is in Akonadi repository. 
and we now have a bunch of fancy libraries uh, that, that might be interesting for application developers. We have kcalcor, kcontacts, and kmime, which are libraries for parsing uh, uh, vcards and icals and, and uh, email messages. And you can use them standalone, and they have very, very little dependencies. So uh, this is something that uh, some applications have been already using in the KD4 days, but it meant like Digicam was depending on KD Pimlips for because of that, or Copeta as well, which is silly. So now they can just pull these individual ri libraries and, and use it nicely. Uh, K Holidays is another very nice library that provides uh, an overview of national holidays and bank holidays in almost all countries uh, around the world. We also have uh, libraries that implement various protocols. So we have KMAP, KLDAP, which implement the uh, individual respective protocols. Uh, there are much more uh, libraries in there. I will not go to, to everyone, to all of them. Uh, so you can see that uh, on the uh, the first column, that's KD, what we only split it from KD Pimlips. Uh, so KD Pimlips is no longer being released. There's nothing there in the repository anymore. Uh, recently, we also split KD Pim repository. Uh, so the middle column, that's a list of applications we have now. That's not interesting. Uh, what's interesting is the last column, which we have a bunch of libraries that were not in KD Pimlips. They were sort of in KD Pim, uh, but used only by the Pim applications because we didn't feel like anyone would use them. But then we realized, oh, that's actually some cool stuff. So we have Grantly theme library, which we created because uh, when we switched to Grantly, uh, which I uh, talked about a couple of slides ago, uh, we realized that Grantly is missing a few things. So Grantly theme actually provides us with some neat Grantly KDE integration. So it introduces new tags into the Grantly theme, like you can use, you can load icons through K icon loader just by saying the name of the use the icon tag and the, the XDG name of the icon, and uh, the plugin can load it, which makes it much easier for us. Uh, there's libgravatar, which allows you to easily pull uh, avatars from the gravatar and libre avatar service, uh, basically the, the free the free version of gravatar, and we have libkc, which Similar to KIMAP is uh, an implementation of the CIF protocol, uh, which is a, uh, a filtering protocol for, uh, for IMAP. So yeah, we have now lots of repositories, but uh, this, is, this, is the this was the final split. Uh, there will be no more repositories. And we hope that <laughs> eventually uh, we will be able to move some of, the, some of the cool stuff into KD frameworks. So for instance, the KCAL core uh, and similar repositories are would be would be really nice to have them in KDE frameworks with all the API and ABI stability promises and making them available to even wider public. <clears throat> now uh, to the individual pro pro programs that we worked on. So obviously KML is probably the most important part. Uh, that's where most of our focus goes on in the terms of application development. So we have improvements in accessibility. Uh, there was a long-term complaint that the accessibility of KML wasn't very good. Uh, now we have uh, text-to-speech integration, so you can actually listen to your emails, uh, either because you want to or because you can't read them. Uh, we have some really good uh, performance improvements when it comes to threading. So if you, if you follow some uh, flame war heavy mailing list and you give lots of very deep threads, it takes forever to open. So we now have caching for the threading, so uh, we don't have to calculate how the emails goes to the threads, and we just load it from a file, and it's much faster. Uh, some uh, really tiny f uh, useful features, which are very well hidden in the settings, but if you can find them, you actually figure out that we can do lots of clever things now. Like, for instance, if you have the problem, like I do, uh, I have a bunch of email identities, right? So I have my work account, my, my at KD account, my personal email, and I constantly keep sending emails to people from the wrong uh, identities. So in KML now, you can actually bind or choose that if you are sending email to a specific domain, uh, that it sh we should use some specific identity for that. Uh, that means, for instance, if you, you can choose that if you are sending an email to at kd.org address, uh, you always want to send it from your at kd.org address so that you don't accidentally send it from your work account or personal account. Uh, the nice things we saw, we've seen in a couple months, maybe the last two months, was a tiny influx of new developers, like occasional contributors. Uh, I think there were two or three guys who sent uh, random patches, uh, improving 
uh, improving uh, the search and, and stuff like that. Uh, Loran also spent some time on Acrocator. Acrocator is our RSS reader, uh, which has been neglected for a very, very, very long time. Uh, we also switched to Qt Web Engine, as everywhere else, uh, but that is still being worked on. Uh, we have a lot of, lots of bug fixes in there. Uh, as I say, we basically haven't fixed anything there since the switch to Qt 5. And up until now, so the last release of Aggregator is pretty good again. And yeah, it was also one of the places where we saw one or two people stepping up uh, from the community and uh, contributing some improvements in notifications. Uh, one of the things that was uh, most requested in Plasma 5 since the beginnings of Plasma 5 was the calendar integration. So Plasma 5, since the beginning, was on all the fancy screenshots, they were sh showing the calendar agenda view, but it was always empty because there was no integration with any events backend. So now finally, with Plasma 5.7, I believe, there is an API that allows uh, third parties to provide a plugin that can show data in the Plasma calendar uh, applet. And with applications uh, 1608, so the last release of KDE applications, uh, the KDE PIM suite also ships the plugin that will feed your events from, uh, from K Organizer into, into the Plasma applet. Right, and uh, this is the, probably the biggest uh, project that is happening now in KDE PIM. Uh, EasyGPG is actually uh, funded by the German government to for us to work on. Uh, the idea is to get encryption and mail encryption and mail signing to normal people, normal users, people who don't know what cryptography is, what asynchronous encryption means, uh, sorry, asymmetric uh, cryptography means, what keys are. So uh, the idea is to, to make this easy for them, basically transparent. Don't bother them with crypto algorithms and keys uh, and, 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 and key, key uh, sizes. Just make it as simple as possible. Uh, currently, we are in phase one of this project. Um, what we have right now is when you create a new account using the account wizard, you can also choose if you want to enable mail signing and mail encryption by default. And if you do so, in the next step, we will just use the name and email you already provided, and we generate a new key. A new key pair. We just ask for a password, and then we automatically pu publish the email to the new uh, GNU PG uh, key service. Uh, and this all happens basically without the user having to understand any of the things behind this. And uh, we also uh, set the keys to the identity which is created for the user. And so when when users try to send their first email, the email will automatically be signed. Uh, the uh, then we also improve encryption. So when you are sending email to someone, uh, you need their public key so you can encrypt the email that you are sending to them. This also meant for users to actually either know that they need a public key or they would uh, have to know where to go and find the key if they didn't have it. So we also improved on that. Improved on that. Now when you uh, type in a recipient address into, into the composer window, we simply ask the GNU PG key server uh, fetch the key if it's available, and we show a little hint saying we will send the email encrypted to this user. And the user can just, this, the, the sender, you can just decide, like, I don't want to encrypt really, and you can disable it. But by default, you basically can send encrypted email to everyone without having to care about all the key stuff. Uh, the encryption for now is disabled by default. You have to enable it manually. But uh, once we have some more uh, stuff in place, we will enable it by default. Uh, this is all building on the Tofu concept, so trust on first use, uh, which means that basically you don't need to go to signing party to get your keys verified because only geeks do that, normal people don't. So uh, we, we, we based on the idea uh, that, that if you receive a certain amount of emails from the same person using the same key, then the key can be sort of trust, it can be trusted. And the more emails you receive, the more we trust that key. And we built on, uh, we, we built on this, so basically, uh, now when, you, now when you get an email, you will most probably get a yellow uh, frame around the email saying this key is, has unknown validity or we couldn't verify validity of this key. What does that even mean, right? So we just say this email was signed and we believe that it's the right, it was sent by the right person. So the people don't really have to be confused with this terminology. Right. 
Uh, I pulled some numbers from, from the Git repositories and from Bugzilla. Um, the numbers are not precise because of the, the splitting that was happening. Uh, it's hard to track comments when they were being be moved between repositories, but it should readily add up. So in the past year, we had 64 individual contributors, including, including Scripty, so 63 human contributors. Um, these 64 human and non-human contributors uh, made over 8,800 commits, which sounds pretty good, right? The project is healthy, uh, it's being actively developed and maintained, uh, the, community, the developer base is quite big. Yeah, well, there's a catch. 72% um, of these 8,800 commits were, by, were done by a single person. That's Laurent Montel. Uh, that's the only person who can every year beat the automated scripty bot in number of commits. <laughs> um, and in total, 90% of these commits were done by only five people. So yeah, we have lots of, lots of like one-off, one-on contributions, but most of the work is done by very few people. And uh, you saw how many repositories and code we have, so uh, we are really struggling to actually keep, uh, keep the quality high and keep introducing new features and new stuff. So if you have lots of spare time, which I'm sure all of you have, please help us. Uh, though we managed to fix a, a few bugs, so we fixed th about 324 bucks. At least that's what Bugzilla claims. Um, I think it might be more, but yeah. So that was the overview um, in numbers. Uh, now let's look into the future. Uh, we will be adding even more and even cooler crypto stuff. So uh, the, I, I, when I was talking about the EasyGPG thing, uh, I, I mentioned it was phase one. There's obviously then also phase two coming in eventually, hopefully uh, in sometime in 2017. Um, we want to work on actually making <laughs> more or less secure storage for the emails locally. Uh, that means that uh, there will be an option for users to choose that when an email arrives that they want to store it locally decrypted. So if the email comes encrypted, uh, we could decrypt it uh, as it arrives and locally cache it, decrypt it. The advantage of this is that uh, we can index such emails when they are decrypted and then you can search in it. If you get lots of encrypted emails uh, and you remember you've seen something in one of those emails, you, you have to actually go through them manually because we cannot index uh, encrypted emails right now. We don't see into them, so we cannot uh, index them, so we cannot search in them easily. So. Assuming most people today use uh, encrypted hard drives anyway, so you don't need another layer of encryption on top of that. Uh, so we can easily just decrypt the email as it arrives and store it locally, uh, decrypt it and index it and do all other kinds of fancy stuff with that. Um, These features uh, should also support the work the other way around, making the storage more secure. That means every email that would arrive would be encrypted with your keys and would be stored locally encrypted. That is probably for people who are very paranoid. But those are the roughly plans for, for the next uh, crypto work. Um, obviously, we will be also working on improving Cleopatra, which is the uh, encryption, uh, the, the key management uh, application in KDPIM. Uh, the usability of that application is well questionable at best. But so we want to improve it to make it again more accessible to regular users. Um, they don't have to go in there. That's the idea of EasyGPG. People won't actually have to open Cleopatra to manage or work with their keys. But sometimes you, you have to, and then we want to make it easy for them to, to work with it. <sighs> Laurent has some plans on changes in search. Um, uh, he doesn't know what exactly he wants to do. He just mentioned he wants to do this. Uh, my plans at least were to improve the infrastructure for searching. Right now, searching is rather fragile. Uh, it usually finds stuff you were not looking for and doesn't find the stuff you are actually looking for. Um, so we want to improve it, make it, make it more robust, uh, make it faster. And we would like to improve the, the UI, which I think is what Laurent wanted to do, uh, because now there is a search dialog, which is sort of complicated. You can build the complex queries, but it's also complicated to, to use it, so we would like to simplify it. Uh, in the past year, we've been also working on 
uh, stripping down the features that we have, because KML has about 500 features, plus another 300 that are in the code, but no one can find them in the UI. So we are working on actually making them optional uh, as a plugins. So we have quite a few things in the uh, in KDPM add-ons repository, which are as optional plugins. Uh, we will also do a bit of facelifting to contact because contact looks the same for the past, I don't know how many years. Uh, it's hard to really change anything. I mean, you need a list of folders, lists of emails and the email, but we, I think we can present it in a nicer way that is more modern, maybe closer to what the modern web interfaces do. So uh, we would like to look into this as well, and we would like to streamline the account creation and account management. Right now, your accounts are basically split into like three places, and in each place you configure something slightly different. So adding a new account is pain, and we would like to have this in a single place. I really like what Thunderbird does, for instance, so we might get inspired in there. Uh, and finally, uh, something we <laughs> realized very recently is that we've been working on something, and we don't even know what people use. I mean, what parts of contact and KML people use, how they use it, how many, how many accounts they have, how many emails they send, uh, do they use IMAP, do they use POP3, do they use MailDir, uh, do they even use the other applications? Like, does anyone even use K-Address Book? Why would you, right? So uh, the idea is to uh, create a survey with lots of questions and try to get it to as many people as possible and figure out what our users actually are interested in. Uh, we, uh, we will be uh, discussing this on the BOF uh, on Monday and then with a bunch of the other developers the week after that. And then hopefully, maybe next month, we will publish it. So if you see a KDPM user survey, please help spread the word to, so that we can get input from as many users as possible and get some idea uh, what we what we should focus on the most so that we can improve the KML in a way that helps our users and not just ourselves. And yeah, finally, there will be a KD PIM buff uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m. in the room MAR003, whatever that is. But we will be there all afternoon, so if you want to get a bit more technical about contact and KD PIM, uh, you can stop there and talk to us there. And I believe, yep, that's it. Thank you. Hi, I just want to ask, are there any plans uh, to uh, resurrect the support for Microsoft Exchange in our contact suit in Akonadi? Uh, I mean, there were a few uh, efforts a few years ago. I think they never got finished. But I think it's a very big thing that still keeps many people from using it in, in the workplace, for example. Since, for example, we have an Exchange server that does not allow IMAP or can only do it for mails, not for contacts uh, and for calendar data. So any plans in this direction? <sighs> Uh, not as far as I can tell, but you can put it on the never-ending to-do list of things to do. Sorry. <laughs> Other questions? Yeah. Uh, maybe it would be good to ask people why they do not use Kmail, perhaps because of the um, repositories because of the dependency hell or maybe because uh, features are missing. Just an uh, idea because it cannot be there yep. tomorrow. Um, think about it. Yep, thank you. I don't think the number of repositories is something that concerns users. Uh, most, of the most of the distributions, as far as I know, we're already doing this split on the packaging level anyway, so now we just make it easier for the packagers to actually package individually. It's just more packages for the release team to release. Um, and yeah, good idea with the asking what they are missing. That's a good thing to add. But I'm sure we have all the features already. It's just nobody managed to find them yet. Dan, I'm a packager. I hate you guys. <laughs> but but we, are, we, are, we are done. No more splitting. And that makes me very happy. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a packager too, so yeah, I hate myself as well. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like PIM developers are a bit of masochists. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions from the room? Yes. 
So I'm one who runs Kmail regularly from uh, master, including all the um, dependencies built. And I regularly have problems with the regressions in the master build, which is very annoying if you um, depend on your mails and your workflow. So are there plans to ensure better that the that there are no regressions, especially now that the splitting is done? Yeah. Or well, having a unit test would be nice, but yeah. uh, the compilation issue is it escapes us. I mean, there seems to be something with CMake, we believe, that it keeps looking for old libraries that no longer exist, even though you updated them. Uh, I have the problem as well. Uh, not sure what where the problem really lies. Um, the break issue stuff, yeah, our unit test coverage unfortunately is lacking at best. Yeah, I think we are still in the phase where we, we keep doing bigger changes, which tends to break while Plasma and Frameworks now now doing like smaller incremental changes. Yeah, so it's it's much easier for me to break things now uh, than I can change things like really big changes. There are still a few in the in the, in the pipe pipeline, so there will be some more instabilities in master for at least the next half a year. <laughs> Seems like there's plenty of discussion going yep. on that yeah, let's will populate the, the your buff. buff then. If there are no other questions, let us thank the speaker. Thank you. Um,